Imagine living as an Aboriginal Australian for 40 or 50,000 years before Europeans turn up, looking at the night sky, no city lights to interfere, all the cosmos to contemplate for eons. There must have been an impact, but no written record to tell us. Now there's evidence of an unsuspected sophistication. Robert Coburn reports. It's a question that fascinates astronomers and historians alike. When did we humans start to track the movements of the planets and the stars in the night sky? It is now being realised that Australia's Aboriginal people had a great knowledge of astronomy, which was virtually overlooked when white settlers took over 200 years ago. Much of this knowledge has been lost. But now comes the surprise, a discovery that could change our whole understanding of Aboriginal people and even the development of advanced human thinking. Duane Hamaker is a student of something called archaeoastronomy at Macquarie University. He's on a mission into the past. There is a stone arrangement in Victoria, about halfway between Melbourne and Geelong, called Bertie Ewan. There are lots of stone arrangements, but this is special, and it's a, a large standing stone arrangement, very similar to the ones you would see in Scotland, Ireland, and in England. It's egg-shaped. It's about 50 metres in diameter with three large standing stones at one apex that mirror three mountains in the background. And at the apex of the other end, if you stand there and look down the center of it, which is exactly east-west, you can see the equinox setting over these three stones. And if you look down the either side, uh, you see two rows that align to the solstices. It looks very similar to Stonehenge in some respects. So we've actually sort of labeled it as an Aboriginal Stonehenge. An Aboriginal Stonehenge, aligned to the summer and winter solstices, the first of its kind to be found in Australia. And I thought, wow, this is really amazing. The questions and implications it raises are staggering. Wordy Yuang is full of surprises and a mystery. The problem with a lot of the stone arrangements and the same problem with Wordy Yuang is there are very few Aboriginal records in the literature and nobody to tell us what they meant or what they were used for. So we've got to try to figure that out on our own. So, did Aboriginal people chart the night skies long before Western astronomers? Did they keep accurate records and master the maths and geometry needed to make celestial plans? It's a, it's a very complex puzzle that we've got to figure out. The astronomical significance of Wordy Yuang was first seen by a local cultural historian, John Morrison, but his work had never received the credit it deserved, until now. I heard this guy, John Morrison, who's claiming that there are some alignments there, that if you stood in a particular place, you would see the sun setting on Midsummer's Day, on Midwinter's Day, and the equinox. Well, if this is real, this is phenomenal. Professor Ray Norris is one of Australia's top astrophysicists at the CSIRO in Sydney, and he is fascinated by Aboriginal astronomy. Norris has now confirmed Morrison's initial findings at Wordy Yuang, and with Duane Hamaker, they are set for further research at the site. Stonehenge is a fantastic site. It's really changed our views of the way that Bronze Age society in Britain worked. Wordy Yuang, OK, it's not as big and impressive as Stonehenge, obviously, it's smaller stones and so on, but it looks like it's the same sort of process. People are starting to get interested in the, the way the sky works. So I think it potentially changes our view of how traditional Aboriginal cultures worked. It shows that people are getting interested in the sun and the moon, and that tells us the way that human thought develops. A rethink of human history. But of course, the big question now is, when were the stones laid? Could Wordy Yuang be older than Britain's Stonehenge? But there's an even grander claim that Norris is exploring. It's plausible because people have been in this country for 50,000 years. So if it goes back, let's say 10,000 years, that predates Egyptians, pyramids, Stonehenge, all that stuff. And so that would indeed make the world's first astronomers. This may predate Stonehenge for all we know. We don't know at this point. So further research would be um, to do some geophysical archaeology to see how old the stone arrangement is. How do you do that? 
Well, that's notoriously difficult. Um, one of the techniques that was actually used at Stonehenge was to take a sample of soil from underneath one of the stones that may have a twig or a leaf or something like that in it and radiocarbon date that. And that was one way that they were able to determine at least one line of evidence they had for gathering an age of Stonehenge. That may be possible here, I'm not sure. Being an aboriginal site, you don't want to go in, you don't want to disturb it. So it's very difficult to be able to, to date these types of sites. And we don't have any contact with any aboriginal elders in the area that know anything about it as well. Wordy Wang's traditional owners, Brian Powell and Bonnie Fagan, are elders of the Wadarung people. They say the traditional knowledge concerning the site has been lost through the banning of their language by white settlers and the government policy to remove Aboriginal children. Thousands of years of knowledge gone in a matter of decades. The challenge now, it seems, is for the Aboriginal and scientific communities to share what they do know and just maybe work out some more of the puzzle of Aboriginal astronomy. The results could be far-reaching. Robert Coburn with that intriguing feature. 